Today we will discuss about examination of ulnar nerve and few specific signs. The important terms are ulnar paradox, Duchenne sign, Froman sign, Cartus, Igawa test, Wartenberg sign, Jean sign, Bouvier, Beaver phenomenon, assisted angle, contracture angle. To differentiate between high and low ulnar nerve palsy, first we have to test flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus of ring and little finger. If these tendons are spared, then it is a low ulnar nerve palsy. First is ulnar paradox. Ulnar paradox means higher the ulnar nerve injury, lower the deformity. And lower the injury, higher the deformity. This is due to sparing of flexor digitorum profundus on the ulnar side. Second is Duchenne sign. Here you can see the Duchenne sign. It is the claw posture with the MCP joint in hyperextension and the interphalangeal joint in flexion. Third is book test or Froman sign. It is a test for the adductor pollicis muscle which is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Here the patient is asked to hold a paper between thumb and radial side of index finger and examiner try to pull away the paper from patient's hand due to weak adductor pollicis muscle which is supplied by ulnar nerve patient will use flexor pollicis longus which is supplied by median nerve to hold the paper or book between the thumb and index finger that is a positive from and sign or book test next is card test card test is a test for mamar interosseous which is supplied by ulnar nerve First insert a card between two fingers of patient's hand and using corresponding fingers examiner try to pull out the card from the patient's hand. If it is very easy to pull out the card that means there is a weak palm or interosia muscle. Here you can see it is a weak palm or interosia. Patient cannot hold the card between two fingers. And here you can see the normal test. If patient cannot hold a card between fingers that is a positive card test. Next is Igawa test. This test is for dorsal interosseal muscle of hand. Ask the patient to keep his hand flat on a table. Then ask the patient to move his middle finger in radial and ulnar direction. If patient is able to do this, it is a normal dorsal interosseal. If unable to do this test, then it is a positive Igawa's test. Next is Wartenberg sign. Third palmar interosseal muscle is paralyzed in case of ulnar nerve injury. So the patient cannot adduct his little finger because of the weakened palmar interosseal due to the unopposed action of extensor digiti minime muscle which is supplied by radial nerve. Little finger will be in abducted position, and it's a positive Wartenberg sign. Next is Jean sign. In case of ulnar nerve injury, there will be paralysis of flexor pollicis brevis deep head and the adductor pollicis muscle. So when we ask the patient to produce a key pinch with the thumb and index finger, there will be hyperextension at the first MCP joint. This is a positive gene sign. On inspection, you can see the wasting of first dorsal interosseal is a positive finding in ulnar nerve injury. Next we will discuss about the Bouvier Beaver phenomenon. In case of claw hand there will be hyper extension at the MCP joint and flexion at interphalangeal joint. When I passively correct the MCP joint hyper extension, the long extensors of finger can fully extend the interphalangeal joint of the finger. This is a positive Bouvier Beaver phenomenon. Lumbrical muscles are the flexors of MCP joint and extensors of IP joints. In lumbrical paralysis, IP joint is going into flexion and the MCP joint is going into hyperextension. Due to the hyperextension at the MCP joint, the long extensors of fingers cannot act on the interphalangeal joint to extend the fingers because it is not possible to exert a pull biomechanically. So the flexors overtake the IP joint and hence they go into flexion. If the MCP joint is assisted into flexion, then the long extensors can act on the interphalangeal joint and interphalangeal joint will go into extension. And this angle of flexion needle is known as the assisted angle. If the assisted angle is less than 30 degree, then static procedures will work well in this patient. If the assisted angle is more than 30 degree, it requires more power to overcome the claw hand. Hence, dynamic procedures like tendon transfer will be required. 
Next is contractor angle. If the PIP joint is in flexion attitude, check the passive extension of the PIP joint. And if passive extension is not possible, then it is a fixed flexion deformity of IP joint and the angle of FFD is known as the contractor angle. I hope that this video will be helpful about major signs of Alana examination. Thank you.